Hello, welcome back to another pen talk. Uh, today's topic is a little bit about restoration and a little bit about what you can do with uh, some of the vintage <coughs> pens that are out there. So if you contacted me um, and asked if I had any uh, Waterman 52s with uh, flexible nibs that I would consider parting with and I said let me take a look. So going through my various parts bins I came out with a 52V barrel and a 52 cap with a ring on the top and I asked him if a Franken pen like this was okay and he said sure. So I wanted to document how the pen looks before I start working on it because one of the things that I think people may or may not appreciate is you know what it takes to kind of restore a pen that's probably close to 100 years old so these are both as found pieces the cap on the screws it has a standard number two nib uh, you know it's a nickel plated lever so you got some gold on the cap some nickel on the barrel so that's one of the differences and it's a 52 V which is there's also a 52 and a half V which is smaller and there's the regular 52 and basically it's the length of the barrel with the 52's and the 52 and a halfs are slightly smaller but they all have the same number two uh, Waterman nib and the thing to take a look at is why did I think this pen would uh, meet uh, the requirements and it's because with a very little bit of pressure you get a lot of flex in that nib so the next thing I do with uh, a barrel like this when I'm looking about doing a restore is I see how easy it is to pull off the section and this one came out very easily you can see the uh, rubber sack that's still attached to the base of the section and when I opened it up and dumped it out uh, the old hardened rubber sack came out and also the lever wire came out which I think is an excellent thing because I like to uh, clean off all the crud and corrosion that this bar has accumulated. I think the uh, rubber sacks were somewhat corrosive and this is pretty much a brass kind of steel. It, it cleans up to a, a silvery color so that's where it is. So I wanted to give you uh, just a, a close-up of what a pen looks like before I start doing my work. And most of my polishing work is done with these pads. I get 20 of them for 8 bucks on Amazon and I find them superior to anything else. Occasionally I'll, I'll use some cleaning solutions but generally I try to stay away from them because they have after effects. The cleaning pads just take off the oxidation, take off the corrosion, give me a nice finish and shine which then I can put some wax on to finish the uh, process. So I'll do uh, other little videos during the restoration process. I'm not going to show you the actual techniques. I have those in other videos. So till later, bye. Let's take a look at uh, <clears throat> what a restored pen looks like to an unrestored pen. So this one I recently restored a couple of days ago, and this is one that will go through a process. So the first thing you'll notice is how the black and red ripple is much more pronounced in this one that's been polished and cleaned up and of course the gold plated elements are, are shinier the barrel on this pen was more oxidized than the other one so the this is just a standard 52 and the other one is your uh, 52 V for vest pocket so the this one will clean up to be a much uh, a pure black and as you can see from the lever, you know, again, it's not a major change, but it's just enough to kind of give it that little luster and that little uh, restored look. So uh, let's see how I progress with restoring the 52V. So this is the results of uh, using the pad to polish the cap. As you can see, the pad was white, and now it has removed a lot of the oxidation, grime, and age from the cap. And it now has a little bit of a shine to it. The colors are, you know, more uh, clearly seen. And this is a different ripple than was on the one that I used to compare it to. But 
the end cap is now nice and shiny. It's never going to be a perfect because of the age. And of course the top also looks a little bit nicer. So the final step is to put a coat of wax on here. As you notice, I'm not touching it with my hands. Until I get the coat of wax on it, I just want this to be as clean and pure a surface as possible. And I don't want any oils or uh, contamination from my hand. So the first wax I used was Renaissance wax, which is a classic wax uh, that restorers use. British Museum. I, I did a review on that a while ago. But it's uh, almost $15 for a very small container. It lasts a long time. I mean, I still have over half of my original one left. But then um, when I was uh, looking around, I got a small sample of Canuba wax, a pure Canuba wax. And that one I really liked how it worked with hard rubber. And I'm feeling kind of a natural oily wax and hard rubber kind of uh, bonds nicely. And I felt it did a good job. So I looked around for what I could get with a canuba based wax. And I love uh, Migurar's uh, wax for cars. So I found this one on Amazon for 10 bucks. It's a decent sized container. And I now use this on my uh, hard rubber. So let's take a look at that result. So this is the cap now cleaned, polished, and waxed. Uh, again, every ripple is pretty much unique and different because it is a natural material and they made these ripple pens for a long period of time. So I'm very happy with how this came out. Uh, it feels good to the hand. Uh, you know, before this it was kind of a little bit slimy. Hard to use those terms. So my next step is to clean out the inside of the cap, which probably has years and years, and there's some wax left in there, some years and years of buildup. So I don't want to clean it out because I use water for that, and water might discolor the hard rubber. So with the wax coating on it, that helps preserve the hard rubber through certain environmental impacts. So that's that. This is the uh, barrel after some polishing and waxing. Quite pleased with how it came out. Uh, it is uh, more of a black finish that was able to be returned and uh, the clip uh, cleaned up pretty nice which the, and these nickel plated clips usually come out pretty good as you can see there's not a, a big demarcation between where the cap covered the barrel and the barrel so that limits the discoloration one of the things that you learn over a period of time is what do you do with this uh, feed and nib and and I just flush it out. I use this rubber bulb. I have a mild uh, soap and ammonia solution here and we'll see how easy ah, air comes through really really easily. Sorry we don't hear in the bubbles because I'm recording the sound uh, afterwards. It didn't come out on the original video. So and as also you can see there's very little uh, ink coming out and this solution pretty much dissolves almost all types of inks so I, I look at the flow and the flow looks great so uh, when I find this in a vintage pen I don't take the nibbon and feed out of the section I leave it alone uh, I'll do a writing sample and if the writing sample uh, indicates that I need to do something then I'll take it apart but that's not my first approach and you, there is a little bit of ink now uh, starting to come out, which is good, but that's the cleaning process. And I'll do this a couple times, and then I'll flush out with water. This is the pressure bar from inside of the water mint. It fell out when I uh, took the section out. You may remember it was quite black and corroded from our earlier bladders. So I cleaned it up. Not a perfect cleanup, but that's not the purpose of just to make it functional again. It also put wax on it so when the bladder goes in it'll slide in very easily. This is a, a unique bar that I haven't seen before. It's a patent applied for is uh, an imprint in, uh, in the pressure bar. It also has a lot of curves to it. Uh, different than uh, Waterman pressure bars but you know these are old pens they were made for a long time so there's probably a lot of changes from pen to pen and that's the interesting thing about vintage is you never know what you're going to find when you take one apart. Now we're going to take a look at inside the barrel after I've inserted the uh, pressure bar. I've attached it to the lever. The lever has two little feet at the bottom which slide into the grooves in the pressure bar and there's a little tab that locks it in place. The pressure bar fits up nice against the barrel. It drops down nicely so uh, it's working quite well. I'm happy about that. 
Uh, I'll tell you like how the little light uh, gives you some insight into the inside of the barrel. Hello, welcome back to the final stages of the restoration of my 52V Franken pen. We have the bladder which has been attached to the section, rubber sack, uh, nice and secure. We're going to take uh, talcum powder, coat the sack with talcum powder just to uh, you know keep it dry inside the barrel, make it slide nice and easy. You know the lever and the pressure bar are, are well done for this. So we're going to slide this in. It slides in easy. I sized the uh, sack before I inserted it and I put the nib facing the lever because I like to see it. So that's good. We're going to use a Waterman ink. Why should we not use a Waterman ink with a Waterman pen? And uh, this is real live first time so we're going to do this together. We'll insert into the ink. Press the bladder, release, bladder, release. And I'm going to do this three times. I'm going to make certain that the feet is nice and saturated. Count to ten. Remove. Get off the excess ink as much as we can. Cap the bottle of ink. Very important step. Get out our wipey rag. This is a pen I would write with posted. We're going to bring out our Fabriano pad. We're going to zoom in a little bit because it should be interesting to see how it works. And let's uh, give it a ride. So right away it's a nice fine nib with no pressure, it lays down a nice line. With a little bit of pressure, that is a nice spread. As you saw I got some uh, railroading but that was pressing it to the extreme. So uh, this nib is well. Now this nib is a little scratchy, more scratchy than I would like so I'm going to do some smoothing on it and we'll be back. I use this uh, trusty nail board from Independence. We're just going to do a little bit on the rough side. I don't put a lot of pressure on it. Then we're going to go to the smoother side. I flex a little bit to get in between the tines because that's what's going to hit the paper. And then we'll do a final on the very smooth side. We'll do a little final polish. So we're going to put this and see how it works. And that did it. I don't get that scratchiness that I was getting before. So I'm happy and hopefully uh, the eventual owner of this pen will be happy. I'm going to publish this video, let him take a look at it and give, give me the final approval. But this is a great nib. Sorry for the shaking, I uh, don't have the setup that I normally like. And this does flex quite nicely. Not a lot of pressure to flex so I'd say that's about as good as you're going to get with this type of nib setup. It's a small nib but it works very very well. So hopefully you've enjoyed this quick review of a restored pen and uh, hopefully the eventual owner also enjoys it. So thank you for watching and the end and the beginning all at once.